We are indebted to Tristan Tazara and his followers for the newest and perhaps the most important doctrinary insistence as applied to art, which has appeared in a long time. Dadaism is the latest phase of modernism in painting, as well as in literature, and carries with it all the passion for freedom of expression which Marinetti sponsored so loudly in his futuristic manifestos. It adds likewise an exhilarating quality of nihilism, imbibed, as it is said, directly from the author of Zarathustra. Reading a fragment of the documentary statement of Dadaism, we find that the charm of the idea exists mainly in the fact that they wish all things leveled in the mind of man to the degree of commonplaceness which is typical and peculiar to it. Nothing is greater than anything else, is what the Dada believes, and this is the first sign of hope the artist at least can discover in the meaningless importance which has been invested in the term art. It shows best of all that art is to betake itself on its own way blandly. I am greatly relieved as an artist to find there is at least one tenet I can hold to in my experience as a useful or a useless human being. I have always said for myself, I have no office, no obligation, no other mission. Dreadfulest of all words than to find out the quality of humor that exists in experience, or life as we are entitled to call it. I have always felt the underlying fatality of habit and appreciation, because I have felt, and now actually more than ever in my existence, the fatality of habit indulged. indulged in by the artist. The artist has made a kind of subtle crime of his habitual expression, his emotional monotonies, and his intellectual inabilities. If I announce on this bright morning that I am a Dadaist, it is not because I find the slightest need for or importance in a doctrine of any sort. It is only for the convenience of myself and a few others that I take up the issue of adherence. An expressionist is one who expresses himself at all times in any way that is necessary and peculiar to him. A Dadaist is one who finds no one. A Dadaist is one who finds no one thing more important than any other one thing. And so I turn from my place in the scheme of expressionist to Dadaist with the easy grace that becomes any self-respecting humorist. Having fussed with average intelligence as well as with average stupidity over the various dogmatic aspects of human experience, such as art, religion, philosophy, ethics, morals, with a kind of obligatory blindness, I am come to the clearest point of my vision, which is nothing more or less than the superbly enlightening discovery. That life as we know it is essentially a comic issue and cannot be treated other than with a spirit of comedy and comprehension. It is cause for riotous and healthy laughter, and to laugh at oneself in conjunction with the rest of the world, at one's own tragic vagaries concerning the things one cannot name or touch or comprehend, is the best anodyne I can conjure in my mind for the irrelevant pains we take to impress ourselves and the world with the importance of anything. Anything more than the brilliant excitation of the moment. It is thrilling, therefore, to realize there is a healthy way out of all of this dilemma of habit for the artist. One of these ways is to reduce the size of the A in art to meet the size of the rest of the letters in one's speech. Another way is to deliver art from the clutches of its worshippers, and by worshippers I mean the idolaters and commercialists of art. By idolaters I mean those whose reverence for art is beyond their knowledge of it. By the commercialists I mean those who prey upon the ignorance of the unsophisticated with pictures created. By the aesthetic habit of, or better to say, through the banality of artistic temperament, art is at present a species of vice in America, and it sorely and conspicuously needs prohibition or interference. It is, I think, high time that those who have the artistic habit toward art should be apprised of the danger they are in, in assuming, of course, 
that they hold vital interest in the development of intelligence. It is time, therefore, to interfere with stupidity in matters of taste and judgment. We learn little or nothing from habit excepting repetitive imitation. I should, for the benefit of you as reader, interpose here a little information from the mind of Francis Bacabia, who was until the war conspicuous among the Cubists upon the subject of Dadaism. Dada smells of nothing, nothing, nothing. It is like your hopes, nothing. Like your paradise, nothing. Like your idols, nothing. Like your politicians, nothing. Like your heroes, nothing. Like your artists, nothing. Like your religions, nothing. A litany like this, coming from one of the most notable Dadaists of the day, is too edifying for proper expression. It is like a window opened upon a wide, cool place where all parts of one's exhausted being may receive the kind of air that is imperative to it. Where art takes hold and flourishes like a bed of fungus in the dark. What is the use, then, of knowing anything about art until we know precisely what it is? If it is such an orchidaceous rarity as the world of worshippers would have us believe, then we know it must be the parasitic equivalent of our existence feeding upon the health of other functions and sensibilities in ourselves. The question comes, why worship what we are not familiar with? The war has taught us that idolatry is a past virtue and can have no further place with intelligent people living in the present era, which is for us the only era. Worth consideration. I have a hobby horse, therefore, to ride away with out into the world of intricate common experience, out into the arena with those who know what the element of life itself is, and that I have become an expression of the one issue in the mind worth the consideration of the artist, namely, fluidic change. How can anything to which I am not related have any bearing upon me as artist? I am only Dadaist. I am only Dadaist because it is the nearest I have come to scientific principle in experience. What yesterday can mean is only what? Only what yesterday was and tomorrow is something I cannot fathom until it occurs. I ride my own hobby horse away from the dangers of art, which is with us a modern vice at present, into the wide expanse of magnanimous diversion from which I may extract all the joyousness I am capable of from the patterns I encounter. The same disgust which was manifested and certainly enjoyed by Duz when she demanded that the stage be cleared of actors in order to save the creative life of... Yesterday was and tomorrow something I cannot... It is the same disgust that makes us yearn for wooden dolls to make abstract movements in order that we may release art from its infliction of the big A, to take away from art its pricelessness and make of it a new and engaging diversion, pastime, even dissipation in itself, to release art from the disease of little theaterism and from the mandibles of the octopus-like worshipper that eats everything in the line of spurious aestheticism within everything in the line of spurious aestheticism within range, disgorging it without intelligence, or comprehension upon the consciousness of the not-at-all-stupid public with so obviously pernicious effect. Dada is a fundamentally religious attitude analogous to that of the scientist with his eyeglass glued to the microscope. Dada is irritated by those who write, quote, art, beauty, truth, unquote, with capital letters, and who make of them entities superior to man. Quote, quote, Dada scoffs at capital letters atrociously, unquote. 
quote, data ruining the authority of constraints tends to set free the natural play of our activities. Data therefore leads to a moralism and to the most spontaneous and consequently the least logical lyricism. This lyricism is expressed in a thousand ways of life, unquote. Quote, data scrapes from us the thick layers of filth deposited on us by the last few centuries, unquote. Quote, data destroys and stops at that. Let data help us to make a complete clearance. Then each of us rebuild a modern house with central heating and everything to the drain. Data's of 1920, unquote. Remembering always that data means hobby horse, who have at last the invitation to make merry for once in our new and unprecedented experience over the subject of art with its now reduced front letter. It is the newest and most admirable reclaimer of art in that it offers at last release for the expression of natural sensibilities. We can ride away to the radiant region of Joie de Vivre and find that life and art are one and the same thing, resembling each other so closely in reality that it is never a question of whether it shall or must be set. That it shall must be set down on paper or canvas or given any greater degree of expression than we give to a morning walk or a pleasant bath or an ordinary rest in the sunlight. Art is then a matter of how one is to take life now, and not by any means a matter of how the Greeks or the Egyptians or any other race has shown it to be for their own needs and satisfaction. If art was necessary to them, it is unnecessary to us now. Therefore, it is free to express itself as it will. You will find, therefore, that if you are... Aware of yourself, you will be your own perfect dataist, in that you are for the first time riding your own hobby horse into infinity of sensation through experience, and that you are one more satisfactory vaudevillian among the multitudes of dancing legs and flying wits. You will learn, after all, that the bugaboo called life is a matter of the tightrope, and that the stars will shine their frisky approval as you glide, if you glide sensibly with an eye on the fun in the performance, that is what art is to be, must come to be in the consciousness of the artist most. Most of all, he is perhaps the greatest offender in matters of judgment and taste, and the next greatest offender is the dreadful go-between or middleman, aesthete who so glibly contributes effete values to our present-day conceptions. We must all learn what art really is, learn to relieve it from the surrounding stupidities and from the passionate and useless admiration of the horde of false idolaters, as well as the money changers in the temple. Those money changers in the temple of success. Dadaism offers the first joyous dogma I have encountered which has been invented for the release and true freedom of art. It is therefore most welcome since it will put out of use all heavy hands and light fingers in the business of art and set them to playing a more honorable and sportsmanlike game. We shall learn through Dadaism that art is a witty and entertaining pastime and not to be accepted as our ever-present and stultifying affliction.